So Cheryl, based on your agenda, it looks like the first thing you want to talk about is the wording from the um, the resolution that the task force um, passed last month. And it passed that resolution with the understanding that we may do some changes to the paragraph about um, the accessibility benefits of text to 911. Is that what we're looking at here? Are some options to consider? Uh, yes. So we'll give everyone, should we just all take a moment to read through them? Uh, yes. So this is Daryl. I, you know, I um, would be happy to hear from the other individuals on the call. I option one or two look good to me. Option three, I'm a little hesitant on the language about when phone signals are bad because it's kind of it's pretty colloquial and I'm not sure most people will know what we mean by that. So I think one or two and then maybe make some, you know, if, if the group wants to make some adjustments um, using those as a starting point, that would be a good, good place to start from. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Matthew? Yeah, um, I like option one and two, but I'm just trying to, you know, imagine, you know, for the long term, um, for everything, for all of it, if it's going to be one or two, just for everything as a whole. So, you know, it's hard to say. Um, if it's one or two for everything, but I think we can have that open for discussion, keep it open mind, and we can talk about that more. Daryl, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, so I think there were two concerns. One was being inclusive, but not using terms which would be offensive to anyone. And the other was was the fact that text number one is also useful in those cases where someone is beyond the coverage area of cell towers, but would still be able to send a text. All right. And I think that's perhaps what three was trying to get at, but not as elegantly as possible. Yeah, and I think I, and that's one of the reasons I'm leaning a little towards number two instead of number one, because it mentions the other applications that it can have uh, that are beneficial for even the hearing public, like domestic violence, hostage situations, active shooters. And I don't know that it's necessary that the resolution spell out every op every situation in which text and 911 could be beneficial either, that I think it's important to focus on where we think it's going to have the most impact. That's why I, I kind of like number two, because it's, it's very inclusive. And, and if there's any problems with the terminology in that we can we can work on that but i think it covers the things that need to be covered and i think the immediate need for addressing uh, uh deaf flying speech issues was so monica could put immediate pressure on those few or those authorities which remain right. non text to 911 capable yeah, I, th I think that was part of the, um, the focus of this is we wanted to make sure that the resolution um, points out that if they don't support text in 911, that they're actually leaving certain populations behind. You have any, you have any comments, Sadie? Um, my only one is um, I am I'm I'm uh, towards option two as well. Um, uh, it says 
uh, alternative means of emergency communication for general public. And I think you're, you're, uh, you're trying to do whole community inclusion. And so um, my, and it, it doesn't even need to go there, but I would have put um, communication for the whole community, um, access to 911 for individuals who are deaf, deafblind, hard of hearing, or other speech disabilities, as well as in the individuals who may be in domestic violence, hostage, or active shooting. That's the only thing is where it says general public, just because of your um, desire to make it whole community. I would just call it out whole community because some other people may call, uh, use different languages as well. So I'm going to change what I'm sharing here to a, an editable version so we can start working on the language, if that's all right with everyone. Yeah. yeah. Is the term speech disabilities offensive? Because the FCC tends to treat it that way to avoid using the word disability. Yeah. For me, call it what it is. Do what? I'm used to speech impaired, so. Uh, you don't have a finger up? No. no. Oh, you got a finger wag no. over over that? Okay. No. No. Okay. You bring it up, um, Joe. This is Sadie. Um, uh, I I think uh, calling it um, hard of hearing or uh, people with disabilities as well as individuals. Um, because instead of just making it very specific to speech disabilities, it's people with disabilities. Uh, uh, so, Sadie? Yeah, that's it. This is Cheryl. Uh, just because uh, uh, a person uh, uh, has a disability. Uh, uh, doesn't mean that they can call or oh, can't call. Oh, uh, and this is uh, this is Cheryl. Uh, noticed in option one, deaf blind is hyphenated, and in uh, two, it is not. So whichever is the prefer the preferred. Uh, uh, of that. This is Holly. It should not be hyphenated. It should be one word together. Okay. So about, one, one is incorrect. Then. Okay. Yeah. So right. how about right. uh, have speech disabilities? How about we change that to um, or have uh, other accessibility requirements or something along those lines? Uh. Because to, to Cheryl's this point, Holly, even if you have a disability, doesn't mean you can't call, but some people do have an accessibility need. I'm uh, sorry, I didn't I, need to talk over you, Holly. Go ahead. No, this is Holly. I just I keep going back to what the FCC uses when they talk about telecom relay services, and it is deaf, deafblind, hard of hearing, and speech disabilities. The thing is, I don't think we're going to make everybody happy with this like there's always going to be somebody who would prefer a different term but if we're just using another agency that works on these same issues that fcc uses deaf deafblind hard of hearing and uh, individuals with speech disabilities So the I, I mean, and I'm not saying that's how it has to be. I'm just saying if we're looking at other agencies, that is a very common term um, when we're talking about telecom relay services. This is Sadie Holly. That bring, that's a, a good point. Uh, I, I'm still struggling on why they keep calling out only specific disabilities. Um, 
uh, and it may be because I don't have history and that's okay. Um, uh, you guys are the experts in here, but that, that's where, why in my mind, that's what I'm, I'm playing with. <laughs> and this is Holly. I'm wondering if it's often because speech and hearing losses or disabilities tend to be um, the ones that have government aided services like telecom relay services to be able to support 911. Um, and so I don't know if there's another disability group out there that has uh, like a special program that's specifically designed for that disability to be able to access 911. Um, and, and that, we want that being said, I, don't, I think we could probably add in to be more inclusive, add in um, and others with disabilities that would limit their their ability to use 911 or, or something like that but I mean, if we wanted to come up with a term that would cover all of them um i'm going to type this but i can i can go back very easily if you guys don't like this so 911 act or access to 911 for individuals with um, accessibility needs or requirements I mean, that would cover everything, you know, unless there's really a specific desire or need to specifically meant to specifically list deaf, deaf, blind, hard of hearing, speech disabilities. Has, has refer, re referencing accessibility needs, has that kind of term been around long enough to be generally understood by the public? This is Holly. That's where I was going to say. I think sometimes when people think, for accessibility for people with disabilities, their first thought goes to wheelchair ramps. Like the, the general public's brain does not go beyond a physical way to access things. Um, I think we all do because of the work that we do. Um, but I think the general public, if you said, what is accessibility for somebody with a disability? They'd say wheelchair ramp like or a handicap spot or something like that. Like that they may just not go beyond uh, what accessibility can mean in terms of telecom. So the, the general term that I came up with is not descriptive enough, essentially, for the general public to understand what, what we mean. This is Holly, maybe you could say for individuals with accessibility requirements, such as those who are okay. deaf, deafblind, hard of hearing, or have a speech disability, Maybe. I don't know. I would turn that over to, to Matthew or Cheryl to provide insight on that. Uh, uh, what, what about Ken? What we, when we're, uh, 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 hi, Ken. Thank you for joining. This is Cheryl. Hello, everyone. Hi, Cheryl. Yeah, and I had one thing here. Hello, this is Matt. Um, I know we've been trying to figure out these names and trying to put different words together. We keep continuing, but you know, my perspective, let's try to keep it simple and straightforward. You know, you know, deaf, hard of hearing, deaf, blind, but also with um, some sort of like separation with speech, um, speech impairment, or just making sure that we're clear because we don't want, because sometimes people get things confused, you know, like if you're deaf or hard of hearing, um, you know, I can't talk. And so I can't blend those terms together. So we need to draw the line. Maybe it's a sentence for deaf, hard of hearing, because they both use sign language. And then maybe another sentence saying, you know, with speech impairments or another way to keep that separate or if you have any sort of speech disability for accessibility for 911 calls. I know we kind of keep circling around this, but those are just my thoughts. This is Holly. I think this takes us exactly back to two months ago when we were having this discussion. <laughs> And that was the, the problem is separating out deaf, hard of hearing and speech disabilities 
when again deaf hard of hearing and people with speech disabilities all use trs telecom relay services it's all under one lump service it's trs and then within trs you have vrs video relay you have sts which is speech to speech services but all of those services fall under trs and the point of 911 is so that people no longer have to use vrs trs or speech to speech they can use 911 as a direct calling mechanism so i definitely see what you're saying matthew and, and wanting to maybe separate speech out from those who have hearing loss but i think it comes back to those with speech and hearing loss all use trs and, and in this case text text to 911 because that's what we're we're trying to promote with this resolution yeah sounds good good answer um and if the system um whatever the system has um, I guess it's just we want to make sure that with the system, we want to avoid confusion, um, like whatever we use in that system, it's better to not, you know, fight it. And sometimes we just need to keep going and rolling along. I know sometimes with um, there can be some disagreements with the wording, if it's going to work in another agency or place or you know, things of that nature, if we can just leave it as it is, I think. Mm -hmm. Who is that speaking? That was Matthew. Uh, that was Matthew, sorry. Uh, so my understanding is that with TRS from FCC comments, oftentimes the TRS um, communicators, call assistants have difficulty finding the correct PSAP to route the call to, whereas with text to 911, that should be automatic and is a better solution. I do have the question if there are accessibility devices that allow blind people to dial 911. Well, this is Daryl. I, I, I mean, yes, they can get a phone that does nothing but dial 911 with a single uh, push button so they don't have to use a interactive touch screen um, once they once it's connected to 911 if their if blindness is their only disability then they can you know use the voice communication just like everybody else so text to 911 isn't really for them and actually dial wasn't the right word cuz we're talking about text <laughs> right <laughs> I butt dialed many people. Yeah, that's not what I meant. <laughs> um, and Holly probably knows this better, but I believe there are devices that l allow um, blind individuals to text, essentially, uh, using using dynamic Braille. I think I've seen those. Holly, is that right? Well, yes, and there's there's also just voice to text. So a blind individual could use their voice and do a voice to text option, and then they're able to hear, and then they can have whatever is texted back to them converted from text to voice, so then they can hear everything that's being said. Um, I, I would like to move forward with making a motion that we accept option number two as is currently written. I, I second that. This is Cheryl. Okay, so I think at this point we usually ask for, um, in Robert's rules, we have usually ask for uh, discussion. Yeah, <clears throat> this is Matthew. I always I agree as well. Okay. 
Uh, we will have the option. Uh, are you are you asking? Uh, will we have the option uh, to switch uh, down the road? Uh, this is Daryl. Yes, technically, but um, the purpose of this resolution is for encouraging the local 911 centers to adopt text to 911 if they haven't already. So we need to get this out uh, to the 911 authorities so they can see it and they can read it. They can share it with their with their board members. Um, so you know, if we change it later, it, it's we're changing it on paper, but the this version would already have been out. All right. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing sure, do you want to do you want to call for a vote then, or is there any other discussion? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and vote. I, this is Holly. Can we just ask if anybody is opposed with accepting option number two? Okay. That's fine, Mr. Earl. Okay. Uh, any opposed? Okay. So it carries. Great. So I'll get this uh, wording back to the task force. Um, there's actually an attorney from Larimer County that put together the uh, resolution for us. I'll have them update the language to match this, and then we will get it to the Colorado 911 Resource Center, who's going to be sharing it with local 911 authority boards. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So Cheryl, the next thing you had on your agenda was what to put on our equal access page. Um, so I think at this point, I, I think the page is at a point where it can go public. That doesn't mean we're done uh, by any means adjusting it or adding information to it because it's a web page. It's a living document, so we can continue to add more information or make improvements to it over time. Um, What's on there now? Let me, let me pull that up for us so we can all take a look at it. Stop presenting and then start presenting. Let me put it in live mode. This is what it looks like to the published. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and then there's the 911 accessibility page, which is specifically what we were talking about. We've got those text to 911 videos we put on there. Th there were several videos that I received, and several of them really covered the different they cover kind of the same topics, just in different uh, levels of detail. So I picked the two that seemed like they covered the information the best. Um, and then we've got information on here about that Holly actually typed a lot of this in for me. So thank you, Holly. Um, all of this other information on the page. Ultimately, I would like to produce our own videos to replace these generic ones that are from uh, the National Emergency Number Association and FCC. Um, probably the FCC, the FCC one can probably stay, but this one is actually branded uh, from another state, so we want, we'll probably want to replace that. But um, this is what's on there. Okay, uh, this, this is Cheryl. We have voice. On, on the what the videos? On the on the videos? Um, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sadie. 
Can you talk about? I didn't get that word, Cheryl. Her what? Oh, can you talk about your video, Sadie? This is Cheryl. Yes, I can. I'm going to drop it in the chat so, so that you guys can see it. Um, they're not all the way completed yet, but um, we spent um, some of the uh, access and functional needs budget uh, to do these preparedness uh, videos. And I work collaboratively with um, with Mickey, our PIO, our public information officer, um, to identify the content. So she gave me the script for each one of those. And then I reached out to get a um, get um, an estimate, and I'm wondering if if that's a possibility. If you guys have a script, uh, maybe you could send it uh, send me the script, and then what I could do is see if I could get some of this in um, the budget um, for the access and functional needs uh, budget, and um, see if, if I could. Uh, put some of the money towards uh, maybe branding it ours in Colorado. Um, okay. I would also need to know what the brand is as well, so I could get approval on that. Um, do you do you know when you would need that script by? Is there a deadline? Oh no, it's up to your group here. I'm I'm just I'm trying to make sure that I stay within. Um, uh, what this uh, program is trying to do. And um, what we're trying to do is build community competency and emergency management um, to be inclusive in each of uh, the local areas. So we're really trying to put some um, uh, roots in the ground at our local jurisdictions. And so this is very helpful, especially if uh, many of your peace apps um, uh, use this website and also use it as um, uh, um, as a, a training tool for people who are deaf. Mm -hmm. I, I just I, I don't know enough about this group. I know I, I I know I've been trying to attend them and and just now through COVID I've been able to attend two out of your twelve this year. Um, but I definitely see the need. Um, and I am going to put some mine uh, budget items into doing some more videos um, um, for the information that we're sending out so that ASL videos with voice and captioning will be included as well as uh, our top eight languages in the state in each of the um, uh, information that we send out. So this, this aligns with that. That's great. Yeah, a little background on the, the web page. The web page itself is um, a public education outward facing web page. It's not really meant for training the peace apps, but certainly they could use it for that purpose. And it's not specific to accessibility. It's it's everything related to 911, including accessibility. Um, so that's sort of the background of it. Sadie, this okay. is Holly with with, I mean, I don't think any of us are going to fight to see how it's branded. Like, I, I don't think we need to have it branded as like the Public Utilities Commission made this or the 911 right. Task Force made this. Could this just be another Ready Colorado video that's Ready Colorado text to 911? I, we just don't have that on any yeah. of our DHSEM um, line. So I'm like, I don't know where to put it. I've even um, spoke to Glenn a little bit more about that because he's more embedded into um, the 911 advisory um, uh, group. Um, and that's really where he, he, he works very closely with all that. And mm -hmm. I am, um, maybe that's, but, but I, I still don't think that DHSEM is the lead in it, but I definitely will find a way to make it work. I think it's important to, on um, getting information out in, in uh, um, uh, as many uh, of our community members in their first language spoken so that it, it helps build that community competency and that individual um, awareness. Yeah, and to, to Holly's point, I, I wouldn't care if it was branded Ready Colorado, but if it can't be branded Ready Colorado, uh, maybe we could just call it, you know, we could brand it for the Colorado uh, 911 program um, or Department of Regulatory Agencies, since that's where we are. 
I, it really doesn't matter to me that the content is what's more important. You know what? Uh, yeah, um, totally. This is Sadie. Sorry. Um, please go ahead and just send me all the logos that we want to use in it. I definitely okay. don't see this to be a problem. I do have to send it through an approval process, but I do see the um, enforcement of this um, of, the, of this video. Holly, Holly, we need a we need a logo. Uh, <laughs> now we got to work on that. <laughs> Yeah, that's just a me and Daryl program. <laughs> yeah, it'll just be our the logo. Will just be our pictures. Yep. <laughs> it would be our faces morphed together. Oh, that's scary. Uh, uh, I want in, this girl. <laughs> I, I think if we are having just information for people with uh, communications accessibility needs in the 911 website and there are other public safety information videos for people with accessibility issues we should link to them also so that we're giving them access to as much information as possible um comment one the other comment is on pages i like to see success stories or video or audio files from calls involving people with accessibility issues. There are kind of examples and things that make people want to come to listen to them. Well, I think it's Sadie. Go ahead, oh, Sadie. Sorry, I'm almost positive Julia Beans at, um, uh, uh, what is it, CU Denver or the UCC, yeah. University of Colorado Denver. Um, did something like that, Joe, um, but I'm not sure how this group is linked up with Julia. Uh, uh, oh, we are. Yep, Julia. Julia attends the task force meetings. Um, I and she used to attend these meetings as well. Uh, you know, and I, I'm not opposed to putting um, some like. Uh, sample videos or audio clips from 911 calls to kind of exemplify. I think it's a matter of finding the right ones and uh, making sure that the agency that they're coming from is comfortable with us putting them on a web page. Yeah, I think it's best we can get them from the Colorado Peace Apps if we can have them yes. kind of propose ones to us that they get because, you know, that it's it's more news and more, you know, relevant if it comes from within the state. Right. And when a, when a 911 center has a very positive story like that, they, they're usually pretty quick to um, you know, approve sharing it. They like to get good news out there. I have a boatload of stories. Yeah, and just you know, in the in the interest of website design, I like to keep it clean. Um, not very, you know, not a lot of um, you know. So you can see, there's not a lot of text on this page. I want people to be able to go on and not have to read through a lot to find what they're looking for. So I think you know, links to audio clips and things like that would probably be best because you can just put the link there and not have to you know tell a story essentially. Um, so I think that's where we're at. I don't know that, you know, unless there are comments today specifically about this, um, I've gotten to go ahead to go ahead and make this um, public. Uh, but we can revisit it every few months if we want and, you know, take a look and see if there's anything else we want to add. We can work on getting that script together for Sadie so that she can look into whether we can get a, um, a Colorado branded um, version of this or something else. Um, and then if anybody finds any other videos that would be helpful and, you know, without making it just a whole page, just with, with nothing but videos, I think we can add those as well. Uh, this is Sadie. I, I wanted to share, um, as I was researching how, uh, North Carolina, they, they put out, um, videos left and right from their commission that's mm -hmm. married up with emergency management, 911, all of these. 
And so in my research, I did find that their commission in North Carolina is um, falls way, right into where emergency management falls in their table of organization. And they also have about 75 employees versus our commission, which I believe, don't quote me on this, I thought Cliff told me that there is like nine of them. Mm-hmm. And so um, th- that's a huge difference. So that that's when I started looking at um, the importance of having emergency information. And then I also had the honor of working with Matthew, where he taught me a lot about accessible communication and how these funds could actually help with that as well. I, I just didn't know that they're funded different in each of the states. So and this I just is thought I'd say that. The video that's on here um, was actually from Nina, was actually done in conjunction with North Carolina. So, yeah, they do have a, a model program for public education on these topics. All right. Um, Carol, I don't know if we need anything else on this topic other than, you know, maybe bring it back in a couple months and see if anybody has any other ideas. And in the meantime, um, maybe Holly. Yeah, I got one thing here. Sure. Um, This is Matthew. Yes, Matthew. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. And so really two things that I wanted to bring up. Um, The first thing, the videos are great, you know, setting out that. um, I like that. But also like um, being able to, we can make the posts, right? But then the next step is, um, you know, announcing the videos, like maybe posting on Facebook or email chains or like just more um, awareness being spread throughout showing that we have this there Mm -hmm. and how we can have that prepared. And then the second thing um, that uh, Sadie discussed was I was thinking about, you know, so far for several months and we need to have one place that you can click that will kind of expand out to all of the communities about any updates, any updates at all. Like one place, not like five different places that you go to, but one, I know it was like deaf and hard of hearing, but like one central hub or one or two places that you can post updates. So we can like, so for example, like when I look at, um, what am I gonna use here? Like Rhode Island. Um, so they have Rhode Island Commission, and if you look on the website, they have a tab that you can click. It's simple. It's just one tab. You click on it, and then anything that's related to updates or current events or what's going on for the deaf and hard of hearing community and what's going on, it's all linked right under that tab. And so you can access that right from the top, and it spreads up from there. I like that because it's, you know, with The Colorado Commission, I know it's a smaller um, running project, but as we expand and grow, I think we can use that model later. But Rhode Island, I think, I think they only have four people, um, but they use that one tab feature and they're able to access um, all the updates there. Just something to think about. Uh, Matthew, this is Daryl. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Daryl. No, you go, Daryl. I'll go after you. Okay. I was just going to say, I think that's a terrific idea. I, I think it's outside of the scope of what this web page is because it's specifically about 911. But I think that is something that maybe the, the um, commission could look at. So, Sister Sadie, I did um, bring that up as I was doing my research on, especially because we had this conversation about the video. And they are they are uh, fixing to do a uh, an update to their website and I asked them um, specifically that question Matthew about putting a hub where um, where emergency management is um, is tied into there I will tell you there's too many state agencies to have it go to each of the state agencies however they're they're going to start adding um, uh, links to these resources as well. So, I, and uh, it was it was a conversation that you brought up in a different topic or a different email um, at one point. But yeah, I, I agree that I should be able to, where can I find this information I, instead of trying to dig through it? 
Um, I, I totally agree with you. I, I, I can relate. And so um, they did tell me that they are working on that revamp. And especially now that commission is part of the HSAC um, Access and Functional Needs Subcommittee. Well, that's good. Yeah. I know when we had the foundation website at one time we tried to have updates, for example, when there were CPR classes and when there were uh, fire departments checking to make sure baby seats were correctly installed and that sort of thing. And it becomes very difficult to gather that information, get people to contribute that information and keep it updated. So that's uh, the first part of it before you put on the website is making sure you have the resources committed to providing updates for you to include on that page. Well, this is Daryl. It might make a difference as to, it sounds like you were trying to get information from local agencies and there's, there's just so many of them. Um, if it's really just updates from state agencies, maybe it's a little, it'll be a little more easier to handle. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, um, Can I uh, jump in real quick? It's a uh, uh, quarter to three. And everyone stay on until until three fifteen, three thirty. Can everyone stay on until 3.30? I can. I have a meeting at 3. This is Matthew. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, fine. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, anyone else? Have I can, but I don't think I'm a necessary personnel. Uh, uh, yes, you are. And Sadie, can you stay on, Sadie? Yeah, I um, I have a three o'clock. Also, we have a, a, a weekly update at three o'clock. Okay. Uh, Sorry, uh, Cheryl. I got to jump off at three too. I got to join Rapo County. So. Okay. Uh, well, 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 uh, just have to table that in next meeting so we've got 13 minutes left and i only see one more item on the um on the agenda do we want to try to tackle that yes What's that? oh sadie um uh stay on this is for sadie under new business b all right, um, Cheryl wanted me to share this with you all. I'm not sure if this is um, uh, related to the group or not, but I thought I'd put it out there as a um, an opportunity to um, attend. I'm gonna put in the drop uh, or in the chat box if you want to sign up. I am um, working, I've been working with the governor's office since the start of COVID to um, ensure that they have an ASL interpreter inside the, um, the screen and through this, uh, I'm not the lead in it. it. It's the governor's office. But what I do is I keep uh, along with um, uh, it was CCDC. We were really on the governor's office to ensure that we kept ASL interpreters in screen. And so I've asked uh, Maria De, um, Maria De Cambria, Cabria. It, it might be Cabri. Um, to um, do a picture-in-picture uh, -picture ASL interpreter, interpreter in emergency response um, presentation. I've been working with her for a while. It's just that uh, she's short staff and then also um, with as many of the press conferences that the governor is doing, he's now doing it as, as a, a normal uh, practice. So I'm trying to get on her schedule to uh, do a, a special presentation, but she asked me to first see who, uh, the interest in it and holy macros, there's a bunch of interest. So I took the uh, Google form. If you're interested, please sign up uh, and I'll get it 
I scheduled with her availability, but I'll also um, get it recorded in the event that those who are interested aren't able to attend. Um, and that one kind of aligns with what I do here at the state. And then I have a biweekly um, uh, meeting and I've been sending out um, a, a newsletter with um, uh with resources for people with disabilities as well as people with access and functional needs. I'm not sure who's all on my distro on, on this call, but um, hopefully you're able to get it. And if you are not getting that newsletter, please let me know if you're interested. There's, I, I'm pulling together, like Matthew was describing, um, all of the different state agencies when it goes and it collaborates or brings us in as um, whole community inclusion for people with disabilities and access to functional needs, and then pulling that information and dis di dispensing it out. Um, I didn't realize how big it, uh, the desire and the need was um, until now um, I have to keep that that going for for uh, the community until I keep building building it up. But um, anyway, that's, that's what that is about. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, Ken, do you have any updates? Who did, I'm sorry, who did you ask for updates? Uh, Ken. Nope, no updates here, but thank you. Anyone else? Nope, nothing here. Okay. Uh, next meeting is um, August 26th or September. 23rd, yeah. 9 to 10 30. Are they choosing one? Oh, so which of those dates would you like? So this is Daryl. Um, just out of pure selfishness, because Holly and I are going to be very busy over the next couple of months, I would uh, prefer the latter one and meet in September. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? That this is Sadie. That works better for me, but I still might end up having a conflict at that time because I have a continuated um, um, uh, engagement at that time, usually on that date. But right now, it, uh, for the twenty third, it's open. <laughs> <laughs> what time on the twenty third? Nine a.m. Nine to ten thirty. Okay. One moment. This is Matthew, by the way. Sorry. Huh. <laughs> Joe? I guess um, I got something going on the 23rd. I won't be able to do that. I have a staff meeting in the morning. Uh, uh, mm. Ask who? Mm. Luke? Um, Ask who? What to attend me? Uh, see if Luke can attend the meeting then. This is Holly. Um, I did ask Luke if he was. Yeah. Oh. This is Matthew. Yeah, I'll ask Luke to attend for me to take my spot. Yeah. Um, this is Holly. Luke very well may be interested in a one time, but I did ask him if he was generally interested in joining the committee. And he said he does not have the bandwidth right now. Okay. I asked him maybe two weeks ago. Uh, 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 
I've asked him a number of times. Hmm. All right. So, Cheryl, should I uh, send out a meeting invite for September 23rd at 9 a.m. and then we'll see if Matthew can attend? I'm sorry, Luke can attend. Do what, Joe? Is there time for what? Well, well, answer this question for what? Um, uh, uh, Cheryl said yes. Go ahead and put that out. Uh, Cheryl, I'm creating it right now. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, is that okay? Is nine, is nine o'clock okay with everybody? This is Daryl. It works for me. I don't know about everybody else. I know. I'm Matthew available works. until 12. Oh, okay. Mm. And this is Matthew. Um, I'll be available in the afternoon that day, um, just letting you know. So um, you can just keep that in your thoughts. Okay. So, Cheryl, would, you, would it be better if we scheduled it in the afternoon so Matthew can attend? Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah, so let's go ahead and change that. How about 2 p.m.? Does that work for everybody? Yeah, it works Anytime for me. after 12, this is Matthew. Anytime after 12 is good for me. Okay. You want to say it two? Okay. okay. So two is fine with, uh, with me. If it's fine with everybody, we'll go ahead and uh, change that to 2 o'clock on the 23rd. That's my final answer. Sounds good, Cheryl. Thank you. Sounds good. Great. All right. Thanks, everybody. Are we adjourned, Cheryl? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Talk to you all later. Bye. Okay. Bye.